sketch the graph of y is equal to 3 over x plus 2 plus 1. Now this graph is a graph of a rectangular hyperbola. So this is a graph of hyperbola or rectangular hyperbola. So we need to first determine the vertical and the horizontal asymptote. You need to find the x and the y intercept. So the easiest is to find the vertical asymptote. So the vertical asymptote is a line which is perpendicular or vertical and you find it by setting the denominator equal to zero. I'll explain the maths behind it. So vertical asymptote is when the denominator denominator is equal to zero. For those who like to remember formula, so this is good, but I'll explain the maths. So what's the denominator? You can see the denominator is x plus two. So let's set that equal to zero. So x plus two is equal to zero. So x is equal to negative two. That's your vertical asymptote. So your vertical asymptote is x is equal to negative two. So that's you always show a vertical asymptote by a dotted line. So this line is your vertical asymptote and you can define or that the equation of that line is x is equal to negative two. Now why is what's the maths behind it? So what we're saying is when x is z, when x is negative two, this is going to become zero and your function is going to be undefined. So let me show this on a calculator. Go to table and just type in three divided by in the bracket x plus two, x plus two close bracket plus one and go to set from say minus 10 to plus 10. Okay, so we're interested when x is negative to what's happening. When x is negative to you and you have an error. That means your function is not defined at that point. And so your graph is never going to intersect this axis. So this is a uh, don't touch me line or, or never touch me. Line. Your graph is going to approach this line, but never going to cross this. It cannot intersect this line. So that's the vertical asymptote. So this is a like a boundary. Okay. The next easy thing is to find the x-intercept or say the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where your graph is going to cut the y-axis. And on your y-axis, your x-intercept, sorry, x-coordinate is going to be zero. So you can find the x, y intercept by setting x is equal to zero. So y is equal to three over zero plus two is two plus one, which is 1.5 plus one, which is 2.5. So your y intercept is 2.5. So this is, this is two and this is 2.5. So your graph is going to pass through 2.5. Okay, the next is you find the x-intercept. So x-intercept is where your graph is going to cut your x-axis. And on x-axis, which coordinate is zero? Well, your y-coordinate has to be zero. So let's set y is equal to zero in this equation. So I can say zero is equal to three over x plus two plus one. So let's simplify this. I'm going to take away one from this side. If you take away one from this side, you have to take away one from this side. So this plus one and minus one gets canceled. So this is negative one is equal to three over x plus two. Now you can cross multiply. You can multiply this and this. So well, I can say I'm going to show the working here. Negative one times x plus two is equal to 3. So let's expand this. So this is negative x minus 2 is equal to 3. So let's add 2 to both sides. If you add 2 to this side, you can add 2 to this side. So this gets cancelled. So negative x is equal to 5. So this implies multiplying negative 1 to both sides. So x is equal to negative 5. 
So what I was saying, when y is 0, x is negative 5. So this is your x-intercept. Okay, the next is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that's very important. That's, that's a bit, needs a lots of explanation. So now from these two points, you are unable to exactly uh, find what's the shape of the, you can make a guess it's going to, one branch is going to go like this, and the other branch is going to go like this. Okay, so to find the horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Okay, you get the horizontal asymptote by putting extreme values of x. Okay, so, so we are going to ask this question, what happens when x is approaching positive infinity? What will happen to y? Okay, and what will happen when x is approaching negative infinity? What will happen to y? That will give, that will give you the answer. So, <coughs> let's use a calculator and uh, let's play with this equation. So, let's Thing, let's put start with 100. So this is 3 divided by, this is 102 plus 1 is 1.02. Okay, so what happens if it will be 3 plus, I'm putting 1000 there, so this is 1002 <coughs> plus 1. Sorry, 3 divided by 1002 plus 1. You can use a common sense, it is 1.00 to this number. So let's let's go, let's make it 10,000. So 1, 3 divided by 10,000 plus 2 is 10,002 hmm? plus 1. Can you see what's happening? 3 divided by, say, Let's put this, put it like this. So this is one million six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six plus two plus one. What's happening? As this number, the denominator is approaching <coughs> positive infinity, this is going to be slightly over one. It is one plus something. Okay. Think logically without when x is approaching a positive infinity, when x is appro approaching positive infinity, this whole thing is going to approach zero. Can you understand this? You can ignore this too, because when you have millions and millions of, say, this is a concept called millionaire's concept, okay, millionaire's approach. When this is approaching millions, this two and three doesn't play any role. This is basically 3, or this 2 doesn't play any role. It will be 3 divided by millions and billions. This is going to approach 0. So when x is approaching positive infinity, this will be approaching 1. So this will be 1 plus some small number. So this will be, it will be over 1. Okay, so this will be one, this will be approaching one, so you can say it, it's, you can say it like this, this will be approaching one from above. You can say approaching one from above, from above. That means it will be slightly over one. It will never be one, it will be over one. Okay, so, and what happens if it is approaching negative infinity? Okay. So let's do, so let's approach negative infinity. So this will be, so let's start 3 divided by negative 1 million. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, plus 2, plus 1. So use the logic. This is going to approach which number? This is approaching, this will be a negative number and plus 1, it's going to be approaching 1 from below. This will be slightly less than 1. So let's do one more. 3 divided by 
say 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is billion, plus 2, plus 1. Oh, that, sorry, I had to put negative there. So let me put a negative. Negative, and let's see what happens. This is a, this will be slightly less than one. Okay, so here you can see, when x is approaching negative infinity, y is going to approach one from below. So in other words, it, it's no, never going to approach one. It, either, either it is approaching one from above, or it's approaching one from below. So, your horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 1. So, this is your horizontal asymptote. So, this is y is equal to 1. y is equal to 1. So, what we are saying is your graph is going to go like this. It's approaching 1 from above and it's approaching 1 from below. When it's negative, it's going to approach 1 from below. So graph would look like this. Now, so this implies you can say your horizontal asymptote, your horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 1. So let's plot some other need points. So let's go to table and say if you can plot, find some need points. Yeah, we've got some need points. When it is negative 8, it's 0 0.5. Oh, you don't, you can't plot this, so let's go down. I want, yeah, when x is negative 5, when x is negative 5, it is 0, okay? Negative 4 is negative 0 0.5, so let's plot that. Negative 4, negative 0 0.5. This is one point, so can we find some other points? Negative 3, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 2. Okay, and so let's find some positive points. When negative 1, you've got negative 1, 4. Negative 1, 4. Okay, and find some other points. 0, 2.5, that's what we got. When x is 0, 1, 2. 1, uh, what was the number? 2.5, yeah, 1, 2. When it was... 1, it is 2. So the graph is going to look like this. This is going to approach, so this is the graph. This is going to go like this, approach 1 from above. And this is going to approach 1 from below. So let me extend this to this side. So the graph is going to look, look like this. So this is going to approach 1 from below. So and this is your graph. You can also investigate what happens when x is approaching negative 2 from the left and right. Okay, you will find as x is approaching negative 2 from the right, this will be approaching infinity. And when x is approaching negative 2 from the left, this will be approaching negative infinity.